how can you make principal private residence relief work for you? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. Do you want to rent your house out when you move out and keep hold of it? Now that's quite a key question these days, especially for a property investor who, if you're anything like me, doesn't really like to sell property, you like to hold on to property. So how do you go about doing that? Now the one key thing to remember if you're keeping your existing property and you're buying a new property for you to live in is you will now have a second property. And in having a second property, you're now going to be paying additional stamp duty on your new property because you're going to have to pay that extra 3% property stamp duty, even though it's a property for you because it's a second property. Now, generally in life, may not always be the case, but we tend to buy more expensive properties, get potentially bigger properties as you move through the property ladder, especially with your own residential property which kind of means the stamp duty you're paying on the house you're going to be moving into is going to be more expensive and the stamp duty is going to be more than the house that you're potentially already living in. This therefore leads to the question of, well, what can I do to maybe mitigate that and not have to pay as much stamp duty? And this really comes down to how you may have your property business set up. And one option for that is if you have a property company already set up. The big question is, do you sell your existing property to your property company to minimise the new stamp duty that you're going to have to be paying on that new property you're buying? So what are the considerations? Because it's not just a quick, yes, let's do it, no issues, nothing to consider. There are quite a few implications. So you just need to sit down and have a think how it would work through. And these are some of the questions that you need to be asking yourself to work out whether it's going to be the right option for you and your properties and your family. Now, one of the first things is not really a tax point of view. It's not really anything but a practical and a lending point of view of what are you planning on doing with your mortgages? Now, most people tend to have some sort of fixed rate mortgage. And if you're buying another property and keeping your old property, then you may be looking and going, well, actually, we've got some more money, so we've got the deposit, no problems, but our product doesn't end for another year or our product is ending shortly, so that's not a problem. So if your property uh, mortgage fee is going to be ending in the next month, then that's not a problem because then you can look at refinancing onto a buy-to-let or some other product However, if you go, well, actually, I've got another year or two years on my fixed rate term, you're now going to have to be considering the early repayment charges and whether it's worth paying the early repayment charges to get out of that mortgage to enable you to refinance that property onto a buy to let or another type of mortgage product. Now, it may be that that's not an issue and you kind of go, not a problem. We'll leave it on the existing mortgage. However, you just need to check with your mortgage lender that you can get something called a consent to let. And this basically allows you to let that property out while it's still on a residential mortgage. But only certain lenders will do that and they may have certain restrictions on what you can and can't do. So it's something to check out. However, one thing to notice, if you are doing that and you are keeping on an, a consent to let for the next year, you've now still got two properties. So that means you are going to be paying that extra 3% stamp duty on the new property. So that's the direct cash hit today that you're going to have to be buying that property and paying that additional stamp duty. Now it's not a big lose-lose here because if you've only got a year or two years left on that product, then in a year, two years, you can look at selling that property into your company. Now, the positive from a stamp duty point of view is if you sell that property within three years of moving house, you'll be able to claim back that additional stamp duty that you have paid. So that extra 3% that 
so maybe five, 10, 15 grand that you've had to pay out on stamp duty, you can get back as long as it's sold within three years. So that might be a way of doing it. So you might have to pay money out today, but you will get it back in the next couple of years as everything works itself out. And this might be a great option if you've got a year left on your fixed rate and you don't really want to be paying the extra however many percent early repayment charges and you can get a consent to let. If the numbers don't work, it may be you want to pay the early repayment charges so you can do something with that property. Now, in terms of doing something with that property, that may be selling that property into your property company. So you look at what the appropriate value is and you'll then sell the property into the company at that rate and you've got all the normal process to go through. It might be a bit slim, simpler because obviously you're not doing it with a third party, but you will still need to get a solicitor involved. They will still need to go through the legal process and you'll still need to sort out your new mortgage product within the company for your buy to let or whatever type of property you're going to be putting into your company. You will have to pay the stamp duty, but potentially the reason for doing this is because the stamp duty will be lower and allowable on that property compared to your own personal residence where you probably won't need to pay any capital gains tax in the future depending what you're doing and it gives you that bonus that um, yes you're paying 3% extra but you're paying probably 3% extra on the lower value property than the higher value property you'll get it back personally the company will have to pay the appropriate 3% on top of the normal stamp duty rates so overall from a stamp duty point of view you'll be better off because you will be paying it, but you'll be paying it on the lower amount, which is obviously one of the reasons for considering this option. Now, one of the final pieces of the puzzle is going to be the capital gains tax. Now, hopefully you may have watched a video about principal private residence relief on the channel. And if not, check that out because that will explain the next bit we are going on to. So as a capital gains tax hits in, you're selling a property. So capital gains tax becomes due. However, with the principal private residence relief, there is no corporate capital gains tax to pay because you've lived in the property. So if you sell the property as soon as you move out of the property, then you've not got an issue. Capital gains tax doesn't become payable because you've basically moved out the property, sold it into the company, and there's no capital gains tax to pay. However, if you leave it for a period of time, say a year, two years, then there may be a little bit of capital gains tax to pay. Now, for the period where you have lived in the property, you've not got a pro problem because you're going to have this PPR relief, principal private residence relief, and there's no capital gains tax for that period. But let's say you've owned the property 10 years, you lived in it for eight, and the last two years you were letting it out, you needed to... Um, leave it so you didn't end up paying too many charges, early repayment charges and things like that. So you decided to leave it in your own name till the product ended and then move it into the company. That's not a problem. However, those final two years, you didn't live in it. So now we've got two out of 10, a fifth of the ownership is arguably chargeable for capital gains tax purposes. Now that's not so much of a problem as we do have a couple of concessions here. The first concession being that the final nine months at present of ownership, however you own it, it doesn't matter, you're allowed tax free. They've kind of given us this time period because sometimes we do try and sell a property and things fall through. So it just gives us that option of if you move house, you're selling your other one, you've got that time scale to help. So in our example of two years out of 10, we're now down to the last one year and three months that is chargeable. So ultimately, this still may not be chargeable because if it's in joint names, let's work on that basis, we've also got two personal allowances for capital gains tax purposes. So in 2023-24, it's 6,000 each. For 24 to 25 and onwards, it's 3,000 each. So unless that gain is over six or twelve thousand even though we may have a gain that may be chargeable it may fall within the 
personal gain, personal allowances for your capital gains tax, which means there's no actual tax to pay. Now, obviously, the longer you leave that, the more likely there are gains to pay. So if you do this after three years, potentially just before you can claim your stamp duty back, there might be a small amount that's payable, depending on the uplift in the property. It may be even after three years, there isn't any um, gain because the uplift in the property is quite small, so it's not a prob problem. Obviously here, it's all about doing the numbers and having a look at how everything actually fits together because every scenario is going to be slightly different. But all you need to kind of think about is start putting some of these numbers together, see how it all fits together, and hopefully you'll be able to see how this could or couldn't work for you. I will do a separate video on the actual numbers and how it fits together with an actual scenario so you can actually see how all of this fits together. So check out the video on the numbers, but hopefully this video has given you an idea of all the different parts and pieces of the puzzle so that you can start putting it together to see if this could be the right option for you, depending if you are looking at keeping your property and you have a property company. In summary, make sure you check out what your early repayment charges are going to be, because they're going to be crucial in seeing how much it's going to cost you. Have a look at how much stamp duty you're going to be paying on your new property and on the property as you take it into the company. Make sure you don't forget that you've got some legal costs to work through this process and you'll need to check that you can get a consent to let on your mortgage if you are looking at leaving it in your own name. The final piece of the puzzle is always going to be that capital gains tax and whether that's going to impact you or not or should I say at what point it's going to impact you as you may be able to do some certain things to give you a bit of time to make it all work with some of the other pieces in the puzzle. So check out all of those different things and hopefully put some numbers together and check out the video on the channel to look at the numbers and how it might work for you. Hopefully today you've discovered how you can be using the PPR relief to move house and keep hold of your existing property. If you've got any questions then please do leave a comment. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel. And let's make tax less taxing. Let's make tax less taxing.